As you can see, I've almost got the rear bodywork die for Raptor finished, apart from its final sanding. So now I can start making the outrageous double rear wing that I'm going to mount here. As usual, I'm going to do it without any exotic tools or fancy equipment. So if you see any techniques that you want to copy for making something for your own race car, you should be able to do as I do in your own garage. I was going to make the main rear wing itself from scratch. The way you do this is you get a piece of timber dowel about 25mm to an inch in diameter and you wrap lightweight sheet metal around that, very lightweight, so that you can shape it and glue it to itself and get the profile of the wing that you want. But luckily for me, a friend I visited on the weekend who's also a racing nut gave me several lengths of this foam cut to the profile of a wing. That's going to make the job much easier and I'll be making two wings. One that will be in, uh, incorporated into the base of the wing and a second one which will be up higher and be adjustable. To make the rear wing itself, I'll simply put a layer of fiberglass or carbon fibre over the top of this foam and that'll give me the end result that I need. But for the base, I'm going to sculpt it and that will be a two-piece mould so I'll uh, carve a die, then I'll make moulds of it, and then I'll make the two halves and put them together. Should be interesting, should be fun. It starts with the usual high-tech equipment, cardboard assisted design. I'm going to use this to map out the shape of the basic support structure that I need to hold the wing. I've pretty much got the shape of the rear wing support structure cut out and stuck together in cardboard. I think this is going to be outrageous enough. <laughs> and the wing will obviously, the top wing will sit in there. And I'll sculpt this to a wing shape as well. So now I can take this cardboard pattern and I can transfer it onto some sheet metal and then I can get the bends in and get a, uh, a more permanent base for my die. Now that I've got the foam wing profile glued in place on the wing base, I need to fill in the back of it. And I was going to use sheet metal in there because I said at the start of this video that uh, I wouldn't use anything too complicated or fancy. But if you're going to do car body building, you really need to get into this stuff. It's pouring foam. Most of you would be familiar with foam in a tube used in the building industry. It only expands three times its volume and is not that strong. Whereas proper pouring foam comprising two pieces, poly and iso, mixed in equal quantities, expands to about 20 to 25 times its volume and is much stronger uh, as, a, as a glue and as a filler. So I'm going to mix this in a moment. I'm going to pour it in here. I've put plastic sheet along here uh, to control where the foam goes. I'll pour it in the middle and then you'll be able to see in close up the way the foam will work its way out through the edge. Very important when you're doing this sort of work, uh, particularly with light materials like this foam, to have escape holes for your foam otherwise it'll pressure your job and it'll crack it and just pop out. But It's going to come out everywhere, it always does, but I've sealed it up as best I can 
and then I've left deliberate weep holes at the top of the job so that hopefully it'll work its way from the middle up the sides and out the top. This will give me something that's very easy to carve and all I need to do is just give it a skim coat of uh, fairing compound and I'll have a hard surface and I'll be able to sculpt the top of that back edge of that wing really easily because both the filler and the wing will be made of the same material.